Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game from Scratch, and exactly one week ago, Visual Studio 2022 was released, and I've gotten a lot of requests to cover it, so here I am, I'm finally covering it. I covered it in a preview in the past, I also covered IntelliCode and a couple of the other key things, so I'm going to try and keep this somewhat short, and what we're going to do is start things off in Unreal Engine. This here is Unreal Engine. This is actually the C++ shooter example. It is a large project file, and it will illustrate a couple of changes to us. Now, first off, one of the things you want to know is if you come in here to Editor Preferences, is and go to code source code right here you'll notice that visual studio 2022 is now an option and for game developers this one is going to be relevant i'm going to refresh my visual studio project and i'm going to fire up a copy of visual studio this is going to showcase a couple of things that have changed all right so we got updated project done all right so now i'm going to open up visual studio uh 2022 and one of the things we're going to notice right away here is the project you get in and boom, you have access almost immediately. So when you, you load it up, it loads in your projects. So this is the loading process. Again, this is a non-trivial project. There's about 33,000 source files in this one and it is available now. Oops, available now. Okay, so here we go. We are now in the new Visual Studio. Your project is available over here. Now what you'll notice is your background tasks are running over here. Now the reason why I went with an Unreal Engine project is they claim that this is now 22 times faster, the IntelliSense generation. And uh, I actually don't do a lot of C++ development using Unreal Engine, so I don't know how this compares to before. Uh, but uh, you're gonna see it is a fair, there, done. So that used to take a fair bit longer. That's one of the improvements they're talking about. Uh, other things that we've got going on here, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time in here. Uh, we do have live coding, so you can actually code with someone else on the fly. Uh, we've got updates to the UI. They have made the dark mode much less glaring. The accent color doesn't pop out and make your eyes bleed. Um, there's higher contrast. They've redone all of the icons here. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see some of the side-by-side -side examples of that in action, but they basically just gave it a Microsoft look and feel facelift across the board. Now, one of the major things that you're seeing here, you actually can't see here. And what I'm going to show is Task Manager. Here is Visual Studio. And one of the things you'll notice beside Visual Studio is the IDE itself is no longer got the 32-bit moniker beside it. So Visual Studio is now a 64-bit application, should be able to handle larger projects, more RAM, so on and so forth. So that is a nice development. Another thing you may notice here is they have a new default font. I believe it's called, was it Consola? Um, something or that. We'll get back to that in a second. I'll show you how you can get that. If you'd like this font yourself, you can use it in your own IDEs or editor or wherever you wish. It's a separate download available, but they have switched the font, the default font they use. Uh, again, we got new dark theming here. Uh, we have the IntelliCode, uh, which I can't really demonstrate that great right here, but this guy, uh, basically your traditional IntelliSense now has the ability to uh, learn from your own code base and machine learn from, um, I think they machine learned it off of the GitHub code out there. Uh, so IntelliSense should be smarter, should recognize common coding practices and make your life easier on the whole. So now let's get into some of the release details. Now when Visual Studio ships, it's not just Visual Studio, it's Visual Studio, C Sharp, um, .NET, and so on. So we're gonna look at those details right now. So we're gonna start with a very TLDR summary of it. They're gonna go through like the, they, they kind of break down the newest, hottest features of Visual Studio 2021, sorry, 2022. Uh, IntelliCode, again, that AI-assisted code completion is definitely Definitely one of the new things there. Um, on top of that, we now have hot reload, not only for .NET, but also C++, so you can update your code and see the changes immediately. You do not have to redeploy and launch your application. I've never actually trusted it, to be honest. I've never trusted hot reload in anything. I've always had some bugs introduced, uh, but some people absolutely live and swear by that feature and functionality. Uh, improvements to the debugger and .NET language services. Um, again, we've moved to a full 64-bit release of Visual Studio, so you should be able to reliably scale to larger and more complex projects. So that is their top level version. There is a whole lot more in here as we were going to see, but we're gonna, again, we're not gonna dig into a ton of detail on these things. So one of the things we talked about was the UI changes, and they actually break them down side by side right here. So they've updated all of the icons, and you can see what they've done. And I agree, the new stuff is definitely clearer, uh, more legible, easier to, to read and see. The contrast is a bit better. Um, another thing that they, so here again, the new icons, old to new. So these are the new things right over here. Uh, and then they've changed the theming options. So color contrast ratio adjustments, um, adjusted the overall color contrast to make the new dark theme accessible for more people. Uh, when an element is being focused on, the component gets a border with increased color contrast. 
So you can see in action things right there versus right there. I do like the new version more, but though weirdly enough in this picture, this looks washed out to me. Uh, but another thing that they did in terms of for dark mode people, instead of having the accent color, so the secondary color like you see right here, be like bright, like a spotlight, what they've done is they've, they've muted it a bit more over there. Um, so yeah, and you also, you can, if you want, you can also get the 2019 dark theme as a downloadable extension. So if you don't like the changes they made, well, those can be all done. On top of that, they added the new Cascadia code, uh, introduced Cascadia Mono as the default font. We'll get back to that one in just a second. Uh, it also includes an option for developers who use ligatures. So Glyph's automatically created. So example, uh, you can turn it on. So when you do this, it actually turns it into an arrow. Um, so if you like ligatures, the font supports all of those things. And again, that font can be used in whatever environment you want to look at. So that is, again, a TLDR version of it. Here are the release notes. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> We're not going to go into to this level of detail by any means. But there is a lot here. Um, so if you want, I will link this in the linked article. If you want to get into the full release notes of what all was in here, I'm still scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling, but there is a ton of uh, smaller changes there. But I think, again, the big ones are um, the UI updates, the 64-bit uh, IDE, uh, IntelliSense improvements, IntelliCode. I think those are like the, the top level features that they've kind of done in the IDE. As I mentioned earlier on, they are claiming 18 times faster IntelliSense for Unreal Engine projects, which, uh, you know, if you're working in Unreal Engine, you're, you're definitely going to appreciate. On top of that, so like I said, this release isn't just Visual Studio, it's also .NET and C Sharp 10. In terms of .NET, uh, there is, there's a lot going on here. In case you were wondering, .NET 6 is .NET Core, I believe it would be 3 at this point in time, so uh, there's no such thing really as .NET Core anymore. .NET 6 is fully cross-platform now, supports all the various different environments that are out there. Um, They've added uh, support for ARM64, so both Apple and Windows ARM64 have been improved in this particular release. Again, we got language bumps to C Sharp 10 and F Sharp 6 in this particular release. Uh, and then uh, let's just do the highlights level. Um, blah, blah, blah. Uh, it's going to be supported for three years. It's a unified platform. Uh, got uh, performance improvements across board. C Sharp 10 was added in. Oddly enough, they're still developing Visual Basic. Uh, this kind of goes with the Visual Studio announcement. We now have Hot Reload in there. Cloud Diagnostics, JSON APIs are more capable and have higher performance generators and serializers. Uh, minimal APIs, ASP.NET Core. Uh, ASP.NET was one of the, like, the last holdouts from the .NET framework that didn't make it over into .NET Core. Uh, got Blazor improvements, file I.O. improvements, and so on. Another big area that they're going is MAUI, uh, which is kind of getting back to here, this unified and extended platform. One of the things when we had .NET, which was specific to, like the .NET framework was Windows specific, and that consisted of ASP.NET and Windows Forms.NET or um, um, WPF. And now they've moved to a more unified architecture, totally cross-platform, and a big part of that is the new multi-platform app UI, or MAUI. So it's a way of writing code in a single project that delivers uh, modern, clean app experience across all different devices. I think there's a picture of MAUI apps in action, but I might be wrong here. So, no, no, that's about, there isn't a picture here. I thought there was, but here, let me just do a quick search. No, unfortunately, it was a different article. But as you can see here, and again, I can't really go into everything that happened here because it's a pretty substantial release. Once again, there is a ton there. I'm trying to just hit the TLDR stuff. Again, uh, ARM64 support is the big one. Hot Reload is in there. Uh, the bumping of .NET being more cross-platform in nature. MAUI, uh, better support across different environments are definitely big areas there. But as you can see, the release notes here there's a lot going on there as well. And then as I mentioned multiple times, C Sharp 10 is also part of this release. A uh, number of improvements to C Sharp as well. Although oddly enough, this one strikes me as, and, and I'm curious of your opinion, we now have global using. So you can actually do a using once for an entire project, sort of like a standard AFX in a way. And this actually kind of strikes me as um, the way things used to be. So it's a weird move back, but I can definitely see how that could save some coding. On top of that, we've got improvements to um, kind of, we got natural types for Lambda. It's a way of uh, for Lambdas to be able to defer types, so you no longer need to do this. Uh, you can just do this. 
and it will automatically generate it for you. And if you do a mouse over on it, it will automatically tell you what it is. Should make code more legible. Uh, so natural types uh, are definitely one of the new additions. We've also got improvements to structs. So uh, better parity between structs and classes. You can now do parameter parameterless struct constructors and field initializers. We've got record structs, uh, which were the same as record classes, which were introduced in C sharp nine. Um, and then we kind of got, there's a number of uh, other improvements, smaller smaller on the whole to the C-sharp side of things. So the C-sharp language didn't change as massively as .NET did, uh, but still a decent number of improvements for C-sharp developers. And yeah, that is the extent of the summary of Visual Studio 2022, C-sharp uh, 10 and .NET 6. Again, very top level hierarchy of what's out there. And as mentioned earlier on, uh, you can grab the new Cascadia code mono font and all the other fonts available right here. As I mentioned, there are coding ligature supports in them. So if you want to do, you've got uh, the arrows filled in, you got all the various different operators, you've got code ligaments, specifically to make your, your source code a little bit more readable. We also have the new version of mono that does not have the ligatures in it. So if you want to use just the new fonts on your own, it is a standalone project available at uh, on GitHub like so. And speaking of availability, if you want to grab Visual Studio 2022, you can easily do so. I will have the link article with the download links there as well. Nice thing here is if you make less than a million dollars a year at your organization, you can grab uh, the community version of it uh, completely for free. Uh, there are free trials available. Otherwise, it's about a grand uh, to buy Visual Studio Enterprise or Pro, um, at least as far as I remember. The nice thing is I've fallen under the community category for so many years now, I never have to buy it. So I do appreciate that. Uh, there is an updated version of Visual Studio uh, 2022 Mac. I think it's in uh, beta three or preview three or something like that announced. Uh, it will be coming at some point in the future. Do keep in mind Visual Studio for the Mac and Visual Studio 2022. And just to make things even more confusing, Visual Studio Code have nothing to do with each other. Visual Studio Code is a standalone code editor, which I do majority of my coding in, to be honest. A Visual Studio Mac is a version of Mono Develop that they've spun off and rebranded as Visual Studio. And then of course, Visual Studio is the big fat original OG IDE that we just looked at today. And that is Visual Studio 2022, C Sharp 6, oh, sorry, C Sharp 10, and .NET 6 in a nutshell. Let me know what you think, comments down below, and I shall talk to you all later. Goodbye.